Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name's Morgan and I'm here to share with you my love of all things DIY and home decor for as little money as possible. Today I'm doing something that I've wanted to do for years and that is updating my kitchen. So I've always loved those all white kitchens. I like the white cabinets with the white countertops and the cute white backsplash. I love it. I just feel like those all white kitchens are just very bright and airy and light and I just love that in a kitchen. But we've been renting apartments since we've been married and we've never stayed in a place longer than a year. So I've just never really felt like I should spend the money on updating my kitchen when I'm not gonna be there that long. Even if it's render friendly and I can just remove it when I leave, I just didn't think that'd be the most useful way to spend our money. <laughs> especially when we weren't going to benefit from it for that long of a time. But now we're renting a townhome. We plan on being here for a while, so I think it's time to DIY myself a cute kitchen. So to start off with, I found this cute peel and stick wallpaper from Target. I love that it's textured, which gives it a much more real effect. And my plan is to do an entire accent wall with this wallpaper. This wallpaper was very easy to use. My advice is to work in small sections, peeling a little bit off the backing and smoothing it onto the wall little by little. If you do mess up, it's very easy to peel it off the wall and reposition it. When I got to the outlets, I used an X-Acto knife to cut out around the outlet and then kept on going. The hardest part of installing the wallpaper was figuring out how to put it behind the oven. I found that it helped to cut an L shape out of the wallpaper so I wasn't working with as much material. Just make sure when you're doing this not to cut too much, cut a little bit at a time, you can always cut more if you need to. So I am the worst at remembering to take pictures or videos before I do things. So this is my kitchen with the backsplash portion done. But I think you can still get the gist of what my kitchen looked like before my renovations. Once the backsplash was done, I moved on to the rest of the wall. So what was really the most difficult part of the wallpaper was matching the panels up so the bricks didn't start and stop in weird places. But I have a trick for fixing that. So when installing this wallpaper, just make sure the mortar lines are lining up and don't worry about the bricks. And it wouldn't be a true brick wall if we didn't do the area above the cabinets, so we gotta do that too. So, I finished putting all of the wallpaper up on the walls. You can see a little bit where the wallpaper sections meet together. There's like a little line. And it's mostly noticeable because the bricks don't really meet up very well. They kind of like discontinue in weird places or just kind of continue on for a long time. So, a neat little hack that I learned from another YouTube video of someone who also put on the same wallpaper. Her YouTube channel is called Wayna World, I believe. But what she did was cut out little sections of brick from leftover wallpaper and put them over the weird bricks on, those, on that line. And it just makes it blend in seamlessly and it looks so good. I have noticed that sometimes you have to have more than one brick. Um, sometimes you can get away with just one brick to fix the problem, but for most of mine, I had to use like two and a half to one and a half bricks to make it look good. I already pre-measured this one and found that if I put it right here, it will go perfectly. Peel off the backing. And look at that. You can't even tell where the lines are. We're just gonna cover that one. And continue this right here. And if it doesn't line up right away, you can just take it off back on. Yep. Good, I think. 
I did end up having a little bit of lifting on some areas of my wallpaper, not a lot, but doing the cutout brick trick worked really great to fix those areas as well. So after my wallpaper was on, I applied my contact paper to my countertops. I've made previous videos on the best ways to apply contact paper as well as some tricks in using it, and I'll link those below, so go check those out for more information on that. I'm using this very berry sticker brand of marble contact paper. It's a matte finish, so it's not as shiny as the other contact papers that you see a lot of the times, which I actually really liked. And also the gray marbling is a little bit more subtle than other contact papers that I've seen, which I also liked, and that's why I picked this brand. I will say that this contact paper is very, very thick. It's a lot thicker than a lot of contact papers I've used. I think it'll be good for my countertops because hopefully it'll be more scratch proof. And another thing, because it's so thick, um, the contact paper rolls very easily and it's very hard to keep unrolled. <laughs> just really does not want to lay flat. <laughs> so that makes it a little bit harder as well. So the biggest thing you want to make sure you're doing is working in small sections. If you do notice any creases that have formed in your contact paper, you can heat up that section with a blow dryer on low heat and the creases will disappear. So the corners and edges were definitely the most difficult part for me. None of my corners came out perfectly, unfortunately. I did a mixture of cutting slits in the contact paper and using a blow dryer to make it a bit more malleable, but I still got creases every time. It would definitely be a lot easier if our countertops had sharp edges, but all of our edges were rounded, so it made it a little bit more difficult. Okay, my thoughts thus far on the contact paper. It's pretty difficult to put on, I'm gonna be honest. My other contact papers I've worked with, I've been able to you know, take it off and reapply it if I got any creases or air bubbles or made any mistakes. This one, no, I, you can't do that very easily. I have had to use every ounce of my strength to be able to lift it up just a little bit to fix any creases or air bubbles, so it's a little bit more difficult. <laughs> Okay, so I can say for certain this contact paper is not cabinet friendly and probably won't be good for your walls either. Some of my contact paper got stuck to the side of my cabinet and just ripped the finish right off of it. So just beware of that. Okay guys, so I just finished the back countertops and now I'm about to start on the island. So I did want to mention that before I did my contact paper, I wiped down my countertops with soap and water and made sure that everything was off of it and that there wasn't any food or anything weird left on the countertops. And then I took a paper towel and some rubbing alcohol and then just wiped down the countertops. And then once that dried, that's when I went in with my contact paper. Now I'm a little nervous to do the island and here is why. So if you can see my counter, um, it has like a round edge and then it like goes to like flat. Like it's a, just a very awkward edge and I don't know how it's gonna turn out, but we will see. So I just used an old card that I had in my wallet that I didn't care about to help me to not get air bubbles trapped in my contact paper. I've also used my hand before and that works great as well. However, because this contact paper was just so thick, it did help to use a card as a type of a squeegee. And they do make squeegees specifically for contact paper, but I'm just too cheap to buy one, so I'm not sure how much more helpful they are, but I've done just fine without one. And then I did go through with an X-Acto knife to clean up the edges around the sink. Be careful when you're doing this because it is very easy to cut off too much. So I ended up not having enough material to go all the way across the island. So I had to put on this little square. I will say that if you overlap your contact paper, it is much more noticeable than if you can fit the two pieces side by side. Okay, so remember those awkward corners? Well, when doing the corners, what ended up working the best for me was to cut small strips of the contact paper up to the edge of my counter. The closer you get to the counter, the flatter you'll be able to get the contact paper to lay. And I would suggest cutting your strips even thinner than I cut mine. 
And then once my strips were all stuck down, I took another piece of contact paper and covered that area to hide the lines a bit more. And I thought it would be more exact if I cut the piece down with an X-Acto knife while it was still stuck on there instead of cutting it beforehand. So that's what I did. Once my contact paper was all down, I went around the sink with a kitchen caulk. I got it in the color white so it would help hide any of my mistakes as well as seal the contact paper to prevent any water getting under it. And I did end up cutting my tube too wide, so a lot of caulk was coming out at a time and it was very hard to work with, so I ended up squeezing some into a disposable frosting bag and that made it a lot easier to work with. I did end up getting a few air bubbles in my contact paper, but only in one section that I did. All the other sections were fine. Because this contact paper is thicker, the air bubbles didn't come out easily, if at all. With other contact paper I've used, you can just poke a small hole in the air bubble and smooth the bubble right out. But that didn't work so well with this brand, so just try your best to not get air bubbles in your contact paper while installing it. However, the air bubbles are literally only noticeable at this specific angle and only when our sliding glass door blinds are open, and we really don't open them very often. If you look from any other angle, you literally cannot see them, and if you close the blinds, they disappear from sight as well. I also wanted to give you a close-up on my finished countertops. My edges all have tiny creases in them, and you can see the seam where the two contact paper pieces meet. It is a more noticeable seam if the contact paper is overlapping, so just be aware of that. So I do think that covering the edges with another piece of contact paper made them look so much better. So I definitely would recommend that if you have tough edges. But really, even with all of these little imperfections, I'm still so in love with how it turned out and I would definitely do it again. For my final kitchen project, I made a DIY pendant light to replace our not so cute one that's in our kitchen now. I found this $15 light kit at Lowe's and I'm spray painting it gold to match my aesthetic. I found this super cute basket in the kids section at Target that reminds me of a tulip and I thought it would be so cute as a lamp. It has a wire frame, but the bottom is mostly just woven material, so I'm just going to thread the lighting cord through that woven material and that way I won't have to cut any holes. The lighting cord is adjustable and you can actually pull the light cord right out of the mounting base. So I pulled the cord out of the base and stuck the cord through the basket as much in the middle as I could get it and then pulled the cord back through the base. And then Tanner was so nice and helped me take the old light down and put the new one up. Once you get your cord the length that you want it, you can cut off the excess. Then you just need to expose the wires that are in the rubber casing so you can attach them to the wires in the ceiling. Hmm, is that a yummy Oreo? <laughs> that one was nice enough to give you an Oreo. So you can get, you can get cutters that will cut like a circle, like perfectly around the wire. And you just pull it out. So you go in, pull it out. That'd be make it a lot easier, but you don't have one of those. So I'm gonna have to do it the annoying way. Kind of like just fish out the wires. So you need to be able to expose the wires so you can connect it to the, like the other wires. I'll give it electricity. Oh, it goes right here. The cap? Right here. It goes on right there? It goes right here. Oh. Baby, it's right here. Oh, no. I have to take this whole thing off. I Almost like the thing. Yeah, otherwise it's just going to come out. You're not gonna build it, it's just gonna keep falling. Oh, poop! <laughs> okay guys, so this 
this was the cause of all my problems. <laughs> I didn't realize that this little piece right here was supposed to go up here. So this little piece, you screw onto this piece and this what holds it onto the ceiling. <laughs> And what I didn't realize is that that's where that goes. And so it was, I had it on underneath in the basket. So when I threaded up my cord, it was stuck below the basket. And we figured that out after Tanner had already set everything up and hooked everything up and did all the wiring. And I just didn't want to make him redo all of that stuff. He's already gonna be late for his class. So instead, I just cut a small hole in this like, I don't know, basket weaving and then threaded <laughs> and then threaded this piece up through it. But because we did that, it made my basket crooked. So we're gonna have to fix that. Also, I knew this was gonna happen, but when I threaded my cord through the basket, it did take off the spray paint that had gotten on the cord. Um, I knew that was gonna happen, so I didn't really spray the cord too well, um, but the spray paint is still sticky, and I sprayed this like a week ago, so I think what I'm gonna do is just try and take off as much of the paint as possible, and then I'm just going to macrame around it so it looks a little bit cuter. Now, I didn't record the process of macraméing this light. I have made a previous video on how to do that that I'll link below for you. So if you are interested in learning how to macramé this, then go check out that video. And here is the finished kitchen. So that was my completed kitchen makeover. I hope you guys loved it just as much as I did. I love how everything turned out. It made our kitchen just so much more bright and light and airy, and I just love how it feels. I do wish that I could have painted the cabinets, but because this is a rental, we can't paint the cabinets and they don't have any existing hardware on them, so we can't add any cute hardware to the cabinets either because then we'd have to drill holes in them and I want my deposit back. <laughs> so the cabinets are staying as is, but I think the addition of the white countertops and the white brick wall just give it that really light and airy feeling that I was going for. If you guys enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and hit that like button. And I'd love to see you back here. So go ahead and subscribe as well because I'd love to have you join me with all of my makeovers and DIYs that I have coming up. If you have any questions on anything I did, go ahead and ask those in the comments. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. And I'd also love to hear your input, what you loved about the project, what you plan on DIYing yourself. Go ahead and put those in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I know that I referenced a lot of my past videos. I'll link those here for you right now. So you can go ahead and click on these links to learn more about contact papering or macrameing. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.